guess I'm wondering if wonder, and I would throw in the experience of awe as well, is that fundamentally an intellectual process or is it an emotional process? Tanya? So I do think those have been the examples, but I think some of the ones that have to do with the, the human body in particular might be very visceral, right? So people will report having an awe experience at the birth of a child, for example. And there's some ways in which that's very cerebral, but there's a lot of ways in which that's extremely uh, physical and corporal and so on. So I, I do think um, uh, awe and wonder can span the spectrum. Um, one thing that I think about as a psychologist is how do these emotional experiences actually translate into behavior? Because that's what's going to be important if we want to explain human behavior, if we want to think about the role of these kinds of emotions in our everyday lives, in scientific progress, and so on. Um, and I think you might be able to think of something like a spectrum from something like awe to curiosity, where when we experience awe, it's, it's often triggered by a sense of there being a really profound gap in our understanding that we don't even know how to begin to address, right? It's not really clear how an awe experience would translate into some particular behavior. When you experience curiosity, at the, you're also recognizing some sort of gap in your understanding, some gap that you want to fill. But that's usually much more closely tied to some immediate action. You might ask somebody a question. You might go look to see what's on the other side of that screen if you're curious about what's on the other side of the screen. There's going to be all sorts of immediate ways it will translate into your behavior. Um, and so maybe there's a bit of a spectrum here where um, it's not about being intellectual versus not intellectual. It's about being something more like the, the basic research wing versus a more applied sort of research wing, where on the basic research side, um, it might feel more intellectual because it's more removed from our everyday behaviors and actions, and we don't yet know what the consequences are going to be of pursuing our awe or thinking about something. Um, you could ask but, if yeah. the roots of the two different words are possibly got something to do with our history of religion as well, cultural mm -hmm. history of religion, whether there's a religious aspect to awe in terms of uh, people feeling kind of overwhelmed by something almost divine in the first usages of the word. I don't know. I'm curious. I, I can't tell you the answer historically for the usage of the word, but there has been research looking at the link between the experience of awe and religiosity and also between awe and science. Um, and I think an important distinction in thinking about that research is that Awe is something that I think can have an, a positive or negative valence. So you can experience awe in a way that is really destabilizing and kind of negative and uh, um, feels very uncomfortable. And that sense of awe tends to make people want to reach out for something that will give them some kind of order or structure in their world. And for many people, not for everyone, for many people, that's some religious belief system. And mm -hmm. so if you take re religious people and you induce an awe experience like that, that tends to reaffirm their religious beliefs. But um, there's also a more positive valence to awe or wonder or various kinds of uncertainty where you recognize that you don't know something, but you think, huh, that's interesting. I, I want to try to figure this out. You're not trying to sort of retreat from the uncertainty. You're moving towards it. And I think that's a very characteristic emotion that scientists experience are people who have scientific curiosity, where we simultaneously have to appreciate all of that we don't know in order to be good scientists. Um, but at the same time, not turn away from that uncertainty, we sort of have to walk into it and try to figure things out. And so I think you can get simultaneously all going either towards a more sort of scientific approach or a more religious approach, depending on the valence and the, the belief system of the individuals and what they're going to find comforting in, this, in the face of the negative. Okay.